Hi, I'm Dr. Deb, and this is Sahifa, September 26th. And I am here with Chris Michaels, who is a math consultant who's been visiting this week um, for middle school math and with two sixth grade math teachers, Dave Tresca and Dan Waters. We have the advantage of being able to have a consultant in our classroom with students and teachers this week. So let's take a few minutes and talk about Chris, what is it that you did? What was the aim behind your time with, with our students? Well, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that the students are collaborating, have a lot of communication, talking to each other, and also that they're problem solving. And so when I come into the classrooms, I look at the students and see, are they doing all these different things? And then how are the teachers facilitating that? It's so important that we can go beyond um, rote memorization and, um, and really look at the thinking that goes and the understanding that goes into all that we do in order to solve the problems that we have now as well as in the future. So what was the lesson um, that you did, Dave? Um, what was the standard? What, what, was, what did you want students to know and be able to do? The standard that we're working on right now is numbers and operations. The strand is uh, integers, and we've broken that into a couple of different lessons thanks to the CPM. First, kids are introduced to integers as just the negative numbers and adding, along with grouping, which is multiplication. And then later on, the kids will be using those same integers once again in another lesson to learn to subtract. So in my lesson uh, yesterday, one of the things that we were starting to do was to appropriately show visuals of how numbers can be grouped and reviewing how numbers are added and taking a look also at terms and how numbers are, are separated so that we can appropriately follow the order of operations. So Chris, tell us uh, about this lesson from a consultant's point of view. You were in the classroom with the students um, and now you're having an opportunity to debrief with um, the two teachers about these lessons. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start with Dan, since that was a, the lesson that you have on video. And so how do you think the lesson went, and is there anything you would do differently the next time you did this lesson with your students? Well, I felt a, a bit of a time crunch with this one. It took them a little bit longer to get into the problem and solve it, so that was a bit nerve-wracking with, uh, with a late start that we got today. So it threw me off a little bit. But I was very happy with the way the students were engaged, that they worked as a team, uh, there was some color coding involved, so every student got a different color to contribute to the drawing. So I really th was happy with that uh, teamwork effort. I heard a lot of good math speak uh, as I was walking around with uh, struggling with walking forwards and walking backwards and representing it. Uh, this is the, the third time I've taught the lesson. I thought it went the best of all this uh -huh. time. So I was, I was really pleased with it. Okay, could you tell us about the state team strategy that you used? Uh, we use one CPM calls uh, the traveling salesman. So the students developed a routine, and then it was their job to go to another team and sell it to them. And it was done twice. The first time was a, a kind of a dry rehearsal. They came back to their team. Suggestions were given. Uh, improvements were made. And then the final round came when they went to a brand new team and repeated it with a new presenter. Mm -hmm. So the uh, And I like the judges. The judges were... Uh, uh, had to be reminded to be honest because it was Jolly Ranchers involved. But uh, I think they did a very good job of, of giving uh, critical comments that helped the students understand how negative and positive numbers work together. Mm -hmm. And okay. they were all actively involved. Yes. They were all definitely engaged. They were talking mathematics, so they were communicating. They had to problem solve at the very beginning because there was no numbers given except for the 23 and the 3, 4, and 5. So they had to use those combinations of numbers to come up with some different ideas. Yeah, it was very open-ended. Mm -hmm. okay, so it's nice. In a sense, what we're doing is we're, um, we're having the advantage as a listening audience of eavesdropping in on your conference. And first, let me express appreciation to you for allowing us to do that. But know that... Um, I think that the audience can pick up, as I can, the intent behind the teaching and learning that's here at the table because everything is done with the intent of how is it that we can improve learning within our students and the the seriousness with which you approach um, your art and your craft is most evident and is um, 
absolutely seen in the results that we get for our students. To be able to have you here, Chris, as a consultant to coach us and to challenge us um, and to take us to new levels of thinking about this is um, one of the great things about working here. So thank you to all of you and know that um, we take the learning for, of your students seriously and that we speak mathematically. We do. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.